So I started Amazon KDP in June 2020, but it wasn't until December 2020 that I earned over my first $1,000. And then it significantly dropped for the next coming three months. And it wasn't until another six months that I earned over $1,000 again. However, since then, I've consistently been able to earn over $1,000 each month. And these are the best tips and strategies to help you with your KDP business. The first thing I want to start off with is mindset, as it's crucial to address this. My journey to a consistent $1,000 a month on KDP started with the belief that it is possible. And mindset involves having the right perspective. So understand that it won't actually happen overnight, but focusing on your own path and not being distracted by other success or taking short term risks. But if you can understand that this is not a get rich quick scheme, but a business that demands time, effort, and most importantly, patience. So I believe a lot of people come into Amazon KDP with the wrong mindset. They see a lot of videos online of people just throwing up notebooks on Amazon and then telling people that it's easy money. But don't believe those videos They actually do more harm than good as they make you believe you can just throw up any types of quality books on Amazon and you'll make sales. But it's just going to leave you frustrated and knowing you've wasted your time again on another online business. So it's best to take a step back and get out of the get rich quick mindset and take your time with this business. There is no rush to get to $1,000 a month. And the most important thing is not to focus on earning $1,000 a month, but the skills that it actually takes to earn $1,000 a month. And the basis of this is that you will have to put in some work. In the first six months when I started Amazon KDP, I was working at least two to three hours a night and on weekends as well. So this was an extra 20 plus hours a week outside of my full-time job, family and other commitments. Although despite that work rate, I was still not able to earn over $100 within the first five months, but I was still making money online I was learning to celebrate the small wins I was learning about niche and keyword research improving my cover design taking courses doing everything that I can to learn the skills to find success with Amazon KDP and then in month seven which was in December I actually hit over a thousand dollars in a month and my mindset had a big part to play in this all my skills had been compounding over time as well as it being the month of December when most people buy gifts due to the Christmas season. However, in the month of January, I got hit with a dose of reality when my income dropped below $1,000. And I was surprised to see this as you just think your income's gonna go up and up, but that is the reality of business. There's gonna be certain months when your income's going up as more people are buying such as Q4, and then you're gonna have months where your income is going down such as Q1 as less people are buying. So you need to prepare your mind for that. However, this video will show you how you can build a stable income of over a thousand dollars each month. But starting off with the right mindset will be the foundation to help you get there. Now, most people that aren't making what they want on Amazon KDP, they don't have a strategy when it comes to uploading books. They keep searching for the hottest niches or looking for the latest YouTube niche video. And following these strategies is just gonna take you round and round in circles and leave you frustrated. The first thing when thinking about strategy is to consider which stage you're at. Think about if you're a new publisher, then you might just want to focus on learning the basics, keyword and niche research and the uploading process and just making sure that you're able to actually sell some low content books. And if you've got maybe a bit more experience or you've been doing it for a while, then you might want to push on and challenge yourself and create more mid content or high content books. However, just understand that each type of book does have its pro and cons. Low content are typically, they're easier to make and they're a good starting point for beginners. So you can make a lot of these books quickly. However, as they are easier to make, there is much more competition and it's difficult to price your books higher and you will earn a much lower royalty. So I'm just going to generalize low content books in this example. And let's say with your low content book, you only earn a $1 royalty. So to earn $1,000 in a month, you need to sell 1000 books which is not an easy feat to do consistently. However, with mid content books, they are more challenging to create such as coloring books, activity books, and short stories, but less people are willing to create them. So for example, with a $3 royalty from these books, you would only need to sell 334 books to cross the $1,000 mark each month. And finally with high content books, so books that have a lot of words in them, these are the most costly and time consuming books. Although they do have the biggest reward, for example, a $7 royalty, you would only need to sell 143 copies of a book in a month to earn over $1,000. So again, just consider where you are in your journey, where your finances are and how much time you have. 
I started off creating some low content books and I built a solid base of those. And then with those earnings, I moved into mid content books and I have a good range of those now. And now with my earnings from mid content, I'm working on some higher content books. So I would definitely suggest trying more challenging books once you feel confident. Too many people stay within the low content area. But if you can try to step out and try more difficult books, which most people aren't willing to do, then you'll be able to find niches with less competition and you'll give yourself a better chance of earning much higher royalties in a month, which will make it a lot easier to get to that $1,000 a month. So when I started to create coloring books, activity books, joke books, quiz books, children's books, was when I started to see my income increase. And this is my current strategy at the moment. I'm just trying to build a well-balanced portfolio of books that will continue to sell on their own for a long time, making this business as passive as possible. So generally three different types of niches that you can choose from is a trending niche, you've got a seasonal niche, and then you've got an evergreen niche. Now trending refers to a subject or topic that can experience a sudden surge in popularity for kind of a, a short period of time such as fidget spinners in 2017. So they were popular for a short space of time, people made money, but then after that, nobody had interest in them. Then you've got seasonal niches. So this is related to a particular time of year or a reoccurring event, such as Valentine's Day, you've got summer, you've got Christmas. So there might be a lot of demand during that time of the year and you'll see your income increase. But after the this season is over, then you'll experience a decline in sales. Finally, evergreen niches is based on a subject that remains relevant and maintains a consistent level of interest over time. So these are usually topics such as sports, faith, personal finance, health and fitness, self-improvement and parenting. So when it comes to building a sustainable online income, an evergreen niche is the most reliable niche to target. You're not going to see your income fluctuate massively up and down, but it should stay stable throughout the year. So this is why I focus on creating as many evergreen books as I can in my portfolio so I can make this business as stable and passive as possible. So continuing on with strategy, I need to talk about research. The biggest issue I see with most people creating books and that have sent me their books to look over is not focusing on what is in demand for their target audience. And for me, research should be the longest part of the process. You should be taking time to identify the keywords, the covers, the other things that publishers aren't doing. Because if you're not taking the time to do this and identify low competition niches, then your books are not going to be found and you're just going to be wasting your time. I've spoke about my criteria several times on my channel and this involves finding low competition niches so ideally anything under 2000 or 1000 but even the lower the better then once you find something with a low number of search results you need to check the demand and with this the lower the bsr the better so the maximum i'll go up to is roughly 200,000 but if i see anything under 100,000 then i know that that is a niche to definitely go for and then make sure that you do see recent books selling so i do like to take a look at the past 30 or 90 days and if i do see several recent books selling then i know that new publishers have a great chance within that niche now, a lot of people ask me how I'm always able to find niches with less than 1000 results. And that's because I shifted my focus to areas that I'm passionate about and have a deep understanding of. And this was when I really started to find success with KDP, as I knew the keywords my target customer would be searching for. I knew the covers, ideas and concepts that they do like and also what they don't like as well. And this helped me to create much more unique books. With this, I also did a careful self-evaluation of my strengths and weaknesses. And as much as I wanted to, I knew that I'm not able to excel at every single aspect of the book publishing process. For instance, I outsourced some book cover designs to professionals, knowing that they could do a way better job than I could. And it was more efficient for me to focus my time on energy on other parts of the process that I enjoy and I'm good at. Now, one of the best things that you can do with strategy is to build a brand. And if we take a look at one of my coloring book brands on Amazon, D&D Coloring Press, then you're going to understand why it's so important. There is ever increasing competition on Amazon and you need to find a way to firstly differentiate yourself from the competition. So within the large print animal niche, I noticed that most of the covers were quite bright and cartoonish in a way so to stand out i decided to create more realistic multicolored animals with a dark background 
as a way to stand out from the competition so my books are noticed right away. Then one of the reasons I created an Author Central account is that you're able to talk about the background to your brand, your story, and this helps to build credibility so customers know that you are a serious brand that has a clear and recognizable identity. Then building a brand also allows you to create a strong and loyal fan base. As usually if customers like your books, they'll buy two or three copies, just like you see in these reviews here. So this person has not only bought the owl coloring book, but they've also bought the cat and the dog coloring book. So once you start seeing those signs that you're selling multiple copies of books a day, then you know you're definitely on the right tracks. Then the final area of strategy is that I'm a big believer of ads. During the first 30 days of a newly published book, Amazon do like to give it a slightly favorable position as they do like to give new publishers a chance. So it might appear on the earlier pages, which does give it a much better chance to sell. However, if it doesn't sell, then it will drop back down in its ranking. So you need to make sure that you're doing everything you can within the first 30 days to ensure that your book does get off to a really good start. And running ads is one of the best ways to push your book forward and promote it as much as you can. There are too many publishers that just upload their book to Amazon and just expect it to sell, but you need to do what you can to run some traffic to the book as well. And there are low cost strategies that you don't need to spend hundreds with each month. On my channel, I talk about the lottery ad strategy, and this is the most basic and simple ad that you can run. And it gets you some cheap clicks that will hopefully lead to sales, but you do need to be very patient with this. Now I do always state that ads will not help a bad book, so just make sure that you do the research, you create an attractive cover, you have an interesting description, and you include all the relevant keywords. So the third part involves taking consistent action over a long period of time. I've had comments on my channel from people saying that they've created 20 low content books and they haven't sold anything, so they're given up. There are no guarantees with any business, but you need to create a system and keep working on it over time to get the results that you want. You can have the best plan in the world to lose weight, but if you don't keep working at it over a long period, then you won't make any changes. So don't focus on the results, otherwise you will be very disappointed early on. When I started KDP, I made sure that I wouldn't look at the earnings every day. Instead, I looked at my results every five to seven days, as this helped me focus on the process of creating better books and improving 1% of the process each day. And then the results eventually started to come with time. So consider how much time you have. Think about an area where you live that you can dedicate to working on your business. Then just make sure that you set a schedule and keep working at it. Finally, it's important every few weeks or months to evaluate and just celebrate these small goals and not just the earnings. Again, it's important to go back and reinforce that mindset of being patient and knowing that you're not going to earn $1,000 overnight. Thinking about your reason why will keep you in the right frame of mind. Although when you're evaluating, you do need to be constantly refining the process, your mindset strategies and the actions that you are taking, because the way you think about KDP will change with time. Now in my third year, I don't think about KDP the same as I think about it in my first year. So keep on developing these strategies and methods and don't be afraid to ask questions and be around the right community of people that are all pushing in the right direction. Now, if you are still concerned with your earnings, the first question I would ask yourself is, have you got enough books? You are not going to earn a thousand dollars with 10 to 20 low mid content books so start working to create more books although if you feel that you have got enough books then consider if your books are diversified enough have you only got low content books or have you improved your skills and tested other types of content so mid content or even high content then even if you still feel that you know you've got more than enough books and you are very well diversified then you really have to assess the quality of your books and be honest and have a look are they really good enough are they in in-demand niches have you really targeted an audience and the better that you can get at this evaluation process then the quicker you can make changes adapt your process and you'll start seeing results so thanks for watching another video. This video was longer than I expected it to be, but it has all the tools to help you whatever stage of your KDP business you're at. And if you've got any comments, then just let me know.